All right, cool. You ready? He's ready. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, it's Born Free here. We are at EVO 2017 and I have with me Big Bird. How you doing, man? I'm good, I'm good. How are you doing? I'm all right, yeah, I'm not too bad. I've just been doing this. I've not seen what's been going on. Have you played yet? Uh, play at six, actually, in two hours. In two okay. hours, yeah. Anybody in your pool of note, or is it just you? Mm, they, I originally had uh, Velociraptor in my pool, oh. but they moved him, they moved him to another pool, so I, don't, I can't recognize anyone, but I'm not gonna like sleep on anyone as well, so. Okay. Yeah. Have you done any secret research on anybody? Uh, I just checked to see if any of these players I have are from Asia or something. Uh -huh. uh, but no, they're all from they're all from the US, and I have one player from New Mexico. New Mexico is in the US. Right? They're all from the US. No problem. No problem. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so you are. Let's talk a little bit about you. You're based in Dubai, right? Uh, I actually live in Abu Dhabi. Okay. Abu Dhabi is like one hour, one hour, fifteen minutes away from Dubai by car. Okay. Now, but this is your first Evo uh, because, well, I mean, it's a little difficult to get here, right? Uh, it's 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 expensive. Uh -huh. It took me like around more than two thousand euros to get here for uh -huh. flight only. So add that to hotel, and it's like three thousand, three four thousand euros to get here. Uh, it's not just the money. I had the money before, but I couldn't get the visa. Like in two thousand fifteen, I applied for the visa and I got rejected. I was 17, so it's kind of understandable. I told them I'm going to Vegas like an idiot. Uh, and they told me, you're underage, you can't go to Vegas. Ah, uh, right. Oh my God, that makes so much sense. Yeah. Okay. 2016, I wanted to go. And my, my, one of my friends wanted to pay, offer to pay for me. But my passport was, expired, it was expiring in July. So to renew the passport, you need time. You need like at least a month. And my, my friend told me in, in May, late May, so I couldn't get it in time. So I was like, well, I guess I'm not going. All right, well, finally you're here. Finally your first here. Evo. What, first do you, what, do you, what do you think? It was amazing. What, what can I tell you about Evo? Evo is like the event, the FGC event. Like, I don't, I don't care what anyone says. Like, I heard Smash Play saying like, Evo is not that good for us. Evo is not that good for us. Maybe because of payouts, they don't really pay much, as much as other events, of course. So they like saying that Evo is not that important to them. But I think like Eve was important for everyone since like everyone, ev the, w the whole world has their eyes on Eve. Yeah. Everyone is watching. So that's why I think it's one of the most important, the most important events. I think it's important to them too. I, I think people just like to uh, be, be a little bit loud sometimes, yeah. you know. Uh, so, okay, first Evo, first time in the US. Are you doing it? Uh, it's kind of a random question, but like, are you going to do any, are you going to do Evo and then a little bit more in the US or? Uh, I actually came here on, tu on Tuesday midnight, basically. Uh. So I had like enough time to explore Vegas for a bit, uh, but that's it. I have, I'm leaving on Tuesday, so I have Monday, the whole Monday, but that's it. I'm leaving, like I'm going from Vegas to, to San Francisco to Dubai. Okay. So now listen, the first time I heard your name, <laughs> this is such a weird story. <laughs> the first time I heard your name was, I was speculating which character they were going to release. Uh, at the Dubai game show, right? And I was like, it's gonna be like this Rashid type character, right? And then I got like these tweets and it was like, Big Bird has been talking to somebody who's been talking to Ono and Ono said it's an existing character. So everyone, everyone came down on me and was like, your prediction is rubbish and you basically, yeah, do you remember? remember. Uh, yeah, and, and, they're, they're like, and everyone was like, it's gonna be um, uh, Cody. Like, it, it's gonna be existing character, it's gonna be Cody, like Big Bird said. And I was like, who's Big Bird? Uh, and and in my head, the name Big Bird, I thought you'd be like a really big guy for some reason. I'm tall, well, I'm tall, so yeah. But let me tell you what happens. We have a, we have a tournament organizer in, in, in Dubai. He's yeah. basically the one who handles Capcom. So he's the one, like everyone knows him as Choco. He's called Choco. So he's the one who told me that, uh, Ono told him that it's gonna be an existing character. Existing character. Uh, I, didn't know, I didn't know that Ono is that much of a troll. Like, I know Ono trolls in public, but I don't think he, would, he trolls in private as well. So he told me that it's gonna be an existing character. Well, my, what I think happened is my video came out on Event Hubs. It showed like, it showed like, a, uh, I guess like an Arabic character where like, uh, the, with like sand, like whirlwind wind, and, wind. I know, but like my guess was like sand, yeah, whirlwind yeah. type of thing. Like I was like, it's gonna be this type of character. Basically you control like wind and, and, and sand and all this stuff. And, 
and the main thing was that it was going to be a character released the week before because they were also also releasing a, a character in the Japanese game Tokyo Game Show. So I was like, oh, why why are they releasing a character in Dubai like a week before Japanese? It's got to be uh, like a, an Arabic an, Arab an, an Arabic, Arabic character, an Arabic right? Character, yeah. yeah. Because I I, I thought I, I like I thought it was going to be an Arabic character because I know Harada released Sh Shaheen yeah. in Tekken, and I know Harada is close with Ono. Yeah. So I thought Ono is probably going to pull the same thing if there is a character reveal in Dubai. So that's why I thought. But then my, my friend told me that it's an existing character. And I, I didn't believe him, but I was like, he talked to Ono, so it got to be him. Maybe it was damage control. Uh, so, uh, Big Bird. Well, why do you why you call Big Bird? That's that's. It's not a funny story, but it's a short story. I when I entered my first event in the UAE, I was wearing a large yellow sh yellow shirt. Oh, really? Yeah, I was wearing a large. That's shirt. Like too big for you? It was really big, actually. Really? It was tall and like really wide. So I'm, I'm tall. So my friend, my friends like saw me for the first time. They didn't, they didn't know my name, so they just they, so they just called me Big Bird. They called my friend first, Angry Bird. I don't know if you heard of him. He was an Akuma player as well. Okay. So they called him Angry Bird because at that time we were like. But 15 or something, 14 that time. So we were really young. So they called him Angry Bird because he looked like an Angry Bird. He had the, the head of an Angry Bird. So he has the head of an Angry Bird. He was really small. Was really okay. Small. So they called him Angry Bird, and then like two of these guys, like since you since, since you guys are close, uh, like close friends, we're gonna call you Big Bird as well since I was wearing yellow shirt. And that's and it just stuck. I uh, the thing I let it, I let it get stuck because like nicknames are the best when someone gives it to you instead of you making it for yourself because I think it sounds kind of cringy if you make it for yourself. Yeah, I know. So I just took it, I just took it. Fair enough. Well, some of, some, so the, it, it's great when somebody gives you a name, especially yeah. if it's like kind of memorable as well. Um, okay, so let's talk about fighting games, your history, like it, you, you, it sounds like you're extremely young. You're like 19, what, 20? You know, 19? 22 years. Uh, I'm in two months, I'm in two months. 20 in two months, okay. Um, so was was how did you get into fighting games? What's the story? What, did, what was the first game you played? What was, what was that first experience like? Was it was it bad? Did you get bodied? What were you playing? Well, uh, I've always loved fighting games. I always loved fight, uh, playing Street Fighter before. Okay. So and I've always liked... which one? I, I think I played all of them. Yeah, but which one did you start with? Which was the I, first one? I, competitively, I started with SF4. No, but which one did you? T and I'll, we'll get onto competitive. Which game did you play the very first? Fighting game you played. Can you remember? Can you remember? <laughs> or, or were you just born growing up no, playing? It's, it's really blurry. Uh, if, if I had to say, I, it was probably Alpha. It's probably oh, yeah, okay. Alpha. Yeah. Okay. I don't think I played Street Fighter 2 because I didn't. I didn't really like like the look of it because it looked really old. Okay. <laughs> it, it, yeah. So I think it was Alpha. I think it was Alpha. Yeah. And how how was that experience when you first played that? Were you like I'm in love with fighting games, or it was it, it, you just it slowly happened, or? Uh, I loved fighting. Fighting games was my favorite genre. Well, beat, beat em up games are my favorite genre of games. So, and fighting games, I was like, whenever we go to a like, house meetup or something with my friends, and they turn on a fighting game, any fighting game, I usually like beat all of them, yeah. even if I don't know how to play the game. Okay. So, I usually beat all of them. And Street Fighter, I, I really love Street Fighter, and especially Ryu. I really loved how he looks and how he. He's able to throw fireballs and stuff like that. So yeah, that's basically how I like started loving fighting games. All right. So at some point you decided you wanted to kind of take it more seriously, right? Uh, and so tell me which game that was, and tell me how you took it seriously. And like because I don't know what the scene is like where you are. So I need to I I because. Because you don't have a, I don't know if you have a scene, do you really? You have a small scene. Like okay. we, we gathered in one of my friend's houses, in one okay. of my friend's apartment. He has like four setups in his apartment. Okay. So we gather there, there's KOF players gather there, there's Tekken players, there's like Street Fighter players. But if I had to count the Street Fighter players who play seriously and like don't mind the game, don't mind playing the game seriously, there's me, Angry Bird, and that's it. That's all. That's so, it. so it's only just me who plays seriously. Okay. So when did you? So you started playing? Was it Street Fighter 4 seriously? Was that the first game you started playing seriously? Uh, or was it something yeah. else? Uh, I started playing Street Fighter 4 seriously. That, that was the first fighting game I started playing seriously. When I started playing SF4, I wasn't really like 
I didn't really have anything in mind that's related to traveling or EVO or getting sponsored or anything. I just played because it was fun. So there was this shop that we had, small shop that we had called Happy World. It sounds like a kid's store, it's not. It's, so th there was an SF4 cabinet there. It was, I think it was side to side at that time, it was vanilla. And uh, I used to go there with my friend. He used to play, I, didn't use, I wasn't playing then. He used to play a lot. And then he invi invited me to, uh, to his house to play SF4 with him. And he kept bodying me and like making fun of me. I was like, I don't even play the game, why are you making fun of me? Why are you so happy? He was like, I'm just happy. And then that's when I went back to my home and like picked the character and went to like started playing it. Like started like training and stuff. And then I played him and I beat him. That, that's Angry Bird. I played him and I beat him. Then next time he beat me and then I beat him, then that's how that's how like I got to this level. Uh, so yeah, I used to go to that shop. I used to started going to it like seriously in 2012 was it? 2012, yeah. And I used to get really bodied there. Like I can't take a game out of anyone. I whenever I take a game out of anyone, it's because they wanted to leave or something. That's it. Because winner stays on. So yeah, I guess that's it. And I was playing pad at that time. So and it was a arcade cabinet, so I couldn't play much. I only played at home or online. That's it. So that I switched to arcade stick and like started going there much. And I saw this. So my first fighting game main, like the one I took seriously, was Guy. Uh, I saw guy? guy ninja. Oh, guy. Yeah. So that I saw a guy player there. I wasn't playing stick back then. I saw a guy player there. He he was playing my friend Angry Bird. And he was just bodying him like fucking five games in a row or something, six six games in a row. It made him waste all his money or something. Uh, so that's when I, I fell in love with that character. I started playing him and that's when I stuck to that character until the end of SF4 basically. It's an unusual character, like fundamentally he's, he's an unusual character. Uh, guy... To, to learn the game, because a lot of people like start with Ryu but... I, I started with Ryu. But I wasn't serious back then. Yeah. Like my first serious main, I started with Ryu and then went to Ken, and then got back to Ryu, and then like my first serious main was Guy. Okay. So let's talk about a little bit about like when you said when you decided you made the decision I'm going to take it seriously, right? Were you aware of like for instance scenes in other places, or was it just like your scene? And what did you do specifically to get better, to get good? Uh, I never actually like put it in my head to take it seriously. I never said, I'm going to take this game seriously, I'm going to start traveling. It just, ha all this just happened, like, all of a sudden. I went to my first tournament, and I got third place there. And then I went to a regional tournament, and I got top eight, I think. But that was, like, that was a mess. That tournament was a mess. So when did I actually, like, start dreaming of traveling? Like, starting having hopes of traveling? Uh -huh. When Xi'an came, when Xi'an came to Dubai in Game 13, and I played him there. That's when he won Evil. That's when he won Evil. Oh, yeah. And right after Evil, he came to Dubai, and, and he was entering a tournament there. We invited him, so he entered the tournament there. And I played him, and I sent him to losers, guy versus game. I sent him to losers, and then we met in grand final, and he won. He won the tournament, but he wasn't loser, so he won uh, five four, five four last round both sets. He won both sets. So that's when people like started knowing me. And that's when one of the one of the like people there came up to me and told me I want to sponsor you. It's fucking Arena, my old sponsor. He told me I want to sponsor you. So I was like, okay. And uh, my first tournament, my, uh, he didn't he didn't like he didn't invite he didn't take me to other tournaments much. I started traveling like my first tournament I traveled to was uh, C Major in Thailand in 2015. That's my first out of like out of the Dubai tournament. I wanted to go to Dreamhack in 2014, but I couldn't get the visa as well. I got rejected. Yeah, in Europe, right? In Europe, yeah. Dreamhack yeah. Sweden. In Sweden. Yeah. Yeah. So I, uh, from then I lost hope in traveling because if I couldn't get a visa to Europe, where am I going to go? Where am I going to go? So my sponsors like suddenly told me I applied for the Evo visa as well, and I got rejected. So one of my friends told me there's a tournament in Thailand called C Major. It was in 2015. It was a premier at that time. And he told me it's easy to get the visa for Thailand. And I just went in and applied and I got the visa. That was my first international tournament. Okay. Uh, how'd you get on? What do you mean? I mean, how, did you did you make top eight? Did you oh, like... Yeah, I actually got bodied in pools. Who'd you get, who'd you get bodied by? Yeah, Is there anyone we know? Wanchan. 
You got Bonchan? I knew it was going to be Bonchan! I, I knew it was going to be Bonchan! I knew it! I got Bonchan there and, and then I lost to some young player from Singapore. It's called Kaiser. Okay. So here's what I really want to know. What I'm really trying to get at is this, right? You live in... You don't, you don't live in LA, right? You don't live in this huge scene where you've access to all these amazing players. Uh, Sien is very similar, uh, like the way he started out. Like, you live in a place where you don't have a huge global scene, and yet, like, you're considered a very, uh, very, very, very good player, uh, a top player. And 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 I'm trying to understand what do you do to get better? Like, do you look at what you watch videos? Do you spend a lot of time in the training room? Like, because it doesn't sound like you have like a, a huge amount of like experienced players around you to like teach you? Uh, well, I, for, for instance, I rely on my friend Angry Bird to play, uh, to, to improve okay. because he's the only one that pushes me to the limit in, in Dubai. But there's other players in the Middle East who are, who are still good and still, uh, still, who can still beat me as well. Like some, some, guy, some guy called Nox 2, I don't know if you guys heard of him. He used to be a guy player in uh, SF4. And he plays Rashid now. And some guile, guile player called Cinnamon from Saudi Arabia. So these three are like the ones who can actually beat me in, uh, in the Middle East consistently. Like, yeah, the, the one who can, uh, who, who can beat me and push me to the limit. But what about training? Uh, I'm gonna, I'm just cutting him because I'm trying to find out. Because when you're on Twitter, when you're on Twitter, you talk about frame data, all that stuff, right? So you know stuff. It's not like you just kind of like played and got amazing. Yeah, like it sounds like you did. You also study the game. Am I wrong in saying that? I don't really study the game. I like. I don't really go to training mode and do this and put myself in that situation or something. I do, but not much. Not, okay. not much, as much as you think. There's this frame data app that, whenever I'm playing against this, a character that uh, that's the first time I played against, I always go to frame data and check his stuff, like check how plus is he on this, how minus is he on this, what can I do in this, what can I do there, for example. And if if frame data is not helping enough, like I go to training mode. And I put myself in the same situation, and I try to find my options in that situation. Okay. So that's my training boot time. That's about it. And regarding frame data, I know frame data. I know my frame, my character's frame data. I know like most of the character's frame data. The, the, the most important part is you need to know what you can do in this and what you can do there and what you can do in that situation and when you can press and when you can't press. So I guess yeah, the, the app really helped a lot. The application really that frame the, the fact. It's called F80. That's the, the, the app that helped a lot. All right. So do you, do you actually have a, a, a training regime, or, or is it just a, like an on-the-go on type of thing, or do you just play a lot of matches? Or I just swing it. I just like play whenever. Just swing it. Yeah, I just swing it. I just play whenever I want to play. I don't really have like a schedule to play. I don't really have like three hours of playing every day. I just like whenever I want to play, I just play. Okay. But whenever there's a tournament I'm traveling to, I usually just stop. I usually play like for four hours a day with my friends, yeah. like as much as I can to prepare. And then when I get here, when I get to the tournament I'm traveling to, I usually get as much set, as many sets as I can before the tournament. So the part that helped me improve a lot is traveling. So with, uh, last year I couldn't travel much, which which is why no one, like barely anyone, has heard of me. And this year I started traveling because of Nasser, Nasser Esports. So they they're the ones sponsoring me right now, and it's the, they sponsored me since March. And I think I've been to every single tournament since March in Europe except high spotting. So. Yeah, I'm from tournament to another tournament. I'm like improving. I can feel myself improving, and whenever I lose, I usually just go uh, and check my match and see what I did wrong and see what I could have done better and see like stuff like general stuff. Oh, you do look back. That's part. It's, that's part of your it's method. It's really hard to look at it back at you losing matches. It's really hard. You, you cringe a lot, but it's that's what that's the important part to help you improve. That's what I do whenever I lose to some, like whenever I lose to someone badly in the tournament, I automatically go and check my matches and see what I did wrong. Okay, all right, that makes sense. That makes sense. If I lose to someone, for example, a last round or something, then I don't really check it. I'm not really interested in checking it, but because I know that I did, I made the wrong decision in a situation that costed me the round. That's about it. Now, if it's a blow up, then I do check my matches. All right, so let's let's move on. Uh, what I want to know is, you picked Ken for three five five. Why did you pick Ken? Because I felt like he was the similar, the, the most similar character to Guy in SF4. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's watch down. He's in your face character. He has a run as well. So and he's like, if you ask every Ken player why he picked Ken, he's gonna tell you the one thing: he's fun to play. The character is literally fun to play. 
and he has like individual abilities like anti air anti air hit confirms it differs from player to player but that's why like i think he like how do i say this i think he shows my ability to play as a player yeah yeah, yeah i mean it, it, you can express yourself yeah, not many characters can do that in the game you can express yourself like a lot with ken but you can express yourself more than other characters okay. that's no, I mean that makes sense. I I, I get it now. Like uh, guy going from guy to Ken, it still makes sense. He's a very different Ken in this game than he was in Street yeah. Fighter Four. I don't like Ken. Yeah, it's a, yeah, totally different game. What do you feel like you you coming to Evo, right? Big yeah. tournament. Uh, how did you do any special like preparation? Are there any particular people that you think uh, th this person is going to be a problem for me if I run up against them? Uh, for once, I went to training mode and I. I picked Ibuki uh, and I started like exploring all my options against her, her mix-ups. Her mix-ups are literally like 50-50s. It's either you block this or block that way. And if you block the wrong way, you're, you're most likely stunned. So I went to Ibuki because I have Japanese Ibuki in my path. I have two Japanese Ibuki, Yukodon and Aqua. So I had to go and training mode and check like what are my options in this situation, in the V-Trigger situation or mix-up situation. I picked, I played, I practiced against Nikali as well because I thought I had Blossom after my pool. Yes. But he got moved out. So, and um, I think that's about it. The most, the, the thing I did the most was prepare mentally for it. Like whenever, whenever I play a set and I lose, I lose a game, I lose a round because I dropped a combo or because I dropped an anti air. I try not to let it get in my head. Like if, if most, most inexperienced, inexperienced players, whenever they drop something, Whenever they drop a winning combo or winning anti air or anything, they get flustered and then they stop playing and then they lose. So I try to prepare myself mentally. Like whenever something like bad happens, I try like to stay focused and forget about it because it's gone. So I think that was like the thing I prepared for the most. That actually uh, leads me onto a question I've been asking a lot of people because this is such a big event. What occurred to me is uh, it occurred to me, but I mean it's pretty obvious. It's high pressure, like especially if you put it on yourself. Um, do you have any ways of dealing with pressure? Do you have any like techniques, rituals, routines, good luck stuff? Do you have ways of making yourself uh, feel confident? Like, do you have anything like that? Or, or are you just a naturally confident guy? Do you get nervous? Like, what's the deal? Uh, I usually just swing it as well. <laughs> so whenever I, get to a to I go to a tournament, I remember that I'm playing for fun. That it's not a job for me, it's a hobby. And I'm playing for fun. I still have a lot of people to represent. I still have my team to represent. But the main thing is, if I, if I put my head that I'm playing for fun, then it won't get to my head much. I will still get nervous. You'll still get, see me get, getting nervous or something. But mostly I just like keep reminding myself that I'm playing for fun. Okay. So I get nervous the most when I'm, when I'm losing. When I lose the first game, for example, then I start shaking and stuff. So I guess that's about it. I don't have any ritual, any good luck stuff. I just like go with the flow. I think that's a that's a I mean I think that's already a great mental state to be in. Like a lot of people don't are not there. You know, a lot of people aren't in that mental state. They're 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 very very worried. And uh, to remember to remind yourself that you're you're having fun have, yeah, yeah. is a really good way to combat that. Just like you know, I don't care. It's fun. It's easy for me. It's easy for me because I am actually doing it for fun. Some players are actually doing it for for a living. So I, they can't really say I'm doing it for fun. So yeah, I guess it differs from player to player, but for me it's mostly a hobby, so that's why it's easier for me than other, than other sponsored players. Okay, so you played 354 and now you're playing 355, right? So you played those two games seriously, uh, so you have a bit of knowledge of like what 354 is like, 355 is like, you've seen 355 go from season 1 to season 2 to season 2.5. Do you think you have a sense of uh, what a Capcom is doing, like in terms of the, I know, this is the, my favorite <laughs> question. But like, do you, do you feel like you understand where the developers are trying to move the game and why? And if so, can you tell me? They're trying to move the game to a, literally a read-based game. They don't want any defensive options in the game. Like they took back, they took out Crouch Tech when they first discovered it in the SF5. They took they took it out, and they took out Jump OS in season 2.5. So they literally want the game to be read-based. Like, no, it's all read-based. You don't, you don't have a defensive, many defensive options in this game compared to SF4. Like, to be honest, it's really frustrating to, to hear that 
like this, the way they're going to. I don't know where they're going to be honest. I don't know the way they're going. I I, I have no idea, but I'm always hoping for the best. I'm always right, so, so when you say it's frustrating, like um, if you were on the development side, what would you change? Would, would you bring back certain things that they've changed? Would you would you add certain things? Like what would you what would you be looking for? Like if you were thinking about the future of Street Fighter Five, like what would your hopes be in terms of development? If I, uh, for, the first thing I'm going to bring back is jump back OS because that that literally added layer, layers of depth to the gameplay. Because back then it used to be jump back uh, defensive option used to be jump back OS block back dash jab or the reversal. Now it's literally block jab grab or reversal, which is which they're all risky. Like you can beat most of these options by one option. Jump back OS, you have to think, you have to, you have to predict, and you have to, to prepare, prepare for the jump back OS to punish it if they do it. So they took that out and they left us with like two or three op options to do. Uh, if, I, if I was a developer, I would definitely change the uh, like adjust the crash counter uh, system. For example, uh, you see when, uh, whenever Nikali plays and he has full V trigger on, what what does he do? Standing heavy kick V trigger, crouching medium kick V trigger, a hit. He gets full combo. If it didn't hit, he's plus anyway, and he get and he put, get put in a mix-up. So that's the first thing I'm gonna change. That's the second thing I'm gonna change, which is make crush counter uh, normals cancel. I mean, normals cancel into V trigger minus all of the minus, no exceptions. And the crush counter mechanic reduce the reward from heavy normals. I mean, crush counters. Like, why do some characters get like Urien, for example? He does heavy punch randomly, like without any thought. He just just does it, like expecting a counter poke or something. He gets crash counted, and he, he gets a dash in, crash heavy, full combo basically. That's that's one of the things I would adjust. Like, if I, uh, for example, Fury in, if I had to just Fury in, I just if he gets a crash counter heavy punch, then he can only get a shoulder afterwards. That's one of the things I would change. So, the, the reward you get uh, from crash counter is insanely high, and the risk is like really low. And also cancelling to V trigger um, from normals is really also the reward is really high. The risk is there's barely, barely any risk. So yeah, that's one of the things I would change. Uh, I would, I would like v reversal system. I would give someone like characters defensive v reversal and an offensive v reversal. Uh, yeah. That that I would do. Like Fang, for example, he has a defensive v reversal. They're all defensive, of course. But I mean, you know what I mean. Like hit and no, the ground, yeah, run away, yeah. hit and run yeah. away. So Ken has a hit run uh, v reversal. So I basically give him an escape v reversal. Fang, he has an escape v reversal. I would give him second v reversal, which is uh, hit v reversal. So that way you can like whenever you play against a character, you need to adjust, you need to plan for them, and you need to pick whichever like V reversal you need to do in this matchup. Yeah. So yeah, defensive option. I want to say I want add more defensive options, but I don't know what defensive options you can add. Yeah, yeah, no answer. Yeah. So that crush counters, uh, V trigger, uh, cancel normals, anti air jabs. I know some characters need anti air jabs, but anti air jabs is like it's really like I'm I'm playing Ken. I don't have anti-air jab, and I'm busting my, like, I'm trying to anti-air with DP, and if, if it misses, I get crash counted and I die. Zangi, for example, you jump at him, he does jab, you get put in a, in a mix-up, either heavy speed or headbutt, and you're dead from an anti-air jab. So that's anti-air jab, I would adjust it, and make it, like, like not able to anti-air. Someone told me that it's not the, the jab's fault, it's the, what's it called, the jump-ins. Jumpin's uh, hurt boxes are like they're not adjusted. They're, that's what makes jabs work. Uh, so, someone told me that. Okay. So it's not really jabs and jabs fault. It's the jumpin's fault. Yeah, it, it's yeah. It kind of sucks when you like feel like you got a good read on somebody and they just pull out this jab at the last minute. It's really it's, like it's no effort, zero effort. It's just yeah. oh you're jumping. Okay, jab, dash in or it's not, it's, it's really frustrating to get hit by jabs. And they just mash it. Uh, so let me ask you about um, season two characters. So you've got Kuma, you've got Colleen so far, and we've got Ed. What do you think of those characters? Do you think they're strong? Do you think any of them are viable uh, to win tournaments? Uh, Akuma right now is definitely viable to win a tournament. Since the removal of Jumpback OS, he's actually gone and gone much stronger, especially the forward heavy punch. Before, it used to, be, it used to get blown up by Jumpback OS, but now there's no Jumpback OS, so forward heavy punch is actually really good in the game. It's plus on block, it's plus one on block. He has a three frame, so it's really good. That's what made him stronger. And uh, what's it called? And also the V trigger fi air fireballs. There's no jump back OS, so if you block one of the fireballs, 
you're getting put in a mix up in a guessing situation where you either backdash or block or shimmy or get shimmy. So yeah, Akuma got stronger because of that. And he was always stronger. He was always strong. I didn't like I, I never thought he was weak or something. He was always strong, he was always annoying to fight against. So yeah, I if I had to put him somewhere, I'd probably put him right outside of top five, yeah. or even like fifth. So yeah, Colleen, Colleen, I don't know about Colleen, I haven't played her much, I haven't played against her much, but she definitely has a lot of gimmicky setups. Like she definitely has a lot of setups, and people are telling me that don't sleep on Colleen, she has a lot of potential. We still have still yet to see it, but that, that's what they're telling me. Ed, Ed is really good as a runaway character, I've heard some people say he's even better than Nash in season one as a runaway character. He has damage, he has mix-ups, especially with V-Trigger. His V-Trigger stays the whole the whole screen, it doesn't go away. And he's also like he's really good as a runaway character. He has high damage as well. So okay. So you, you would say that Akuma Akuma obviously we've seen for a long time now, you think he's viable and you're thinking you're thinking that Ed might might well be viable, but we've yet to see it. Uh, but with time I think he'll be viable. I think it would, if people play him correctly, if people figure out the perfect playstyle for him and play him correctly, I think he'll definitely be viable. I haven't been able to watch any matches today, but I have no idea if Infiltration brought, brought an Ed along. I haven't seen him. Uh, but it sounds like an Infiltration. The way you're describing him, he sounds like an Infiltration character. He sounds like an Infiltration character. He's a runner character. That's what Infiltration played in Season 1. A runner character, just Nash. So, yeah. Alright, so, uh, are you planning on playing, do you play any other fighting games? Uh, or are you planning on playing any other fighting games? Because there's a whole bunch of new ones out now, and there's a whole bunch of new ones coming. Uh, to be honest, uh, I've, I've played Injustice for a bit. I'm probably going to play it more. It's really fun to play, but competitively, I don't think I'll play any other fighting games. At least this year, because I'm focusing on the Kakam Pro Tour. I'm almost in, I have 380 global points, so oh. I'm almost in. So I'm gonna focus on Capcom Cup, and after next, after Capcom Cup, I'm gonna see what happens. If I still love the game, if I, still, if I don't love the game, if I can play another fighting game. There's Marvel's Capcom coming out, and there's Dragon Ball Z. That's what I want to play, Dragon Ball Z. Hey. I'm definitely gonna play that. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if, about competitively, but I'm definitely gonna play that game. Okay. So yeah, you and you and just about every other person on this planet uh, right now. <laughs> Uh, so I want to ask you, we got to wrap this up actually because we've been going for a little while now. Um, but I definitely want to ask you, oh, I want to ask you a couple of questions just about your life really. First one actually is more, just more about video games but a little bit further out. Do you play any other types of video games outside of fighting games, for, like just for fun? Uh, I, play, I play like single player games, that's about it. I play shooters, shooters when, whenever like... I'm in the mood for it. I, I, the last shooter I played was Titanfall 2. So I like shooters as a game, as a fun game to play. But it's not, it's not competitive, of course. It's no, only no, for fun. No, yeah, I'm just fun. asking for fun. Like, people want to know. Shooters, I play single player games. I don't. Play role playing games? Huh? Play role playing games? Yeah. Dark Souls counts as an RPG, right? Dark Souls. Oh, uh, yeah, action RPG. Yeah, so I played all Dark Souls 1, 3, and Bloodborne. And uh, I, you like I, difficult games. Yeah, and I played Mio or whatever that's called. Yeah, that's yeah, also Mario similar. Mio, yeah. I played that game as well. And I finished all of them, of course. Okay. Two, I haven't played Dark Souls 2 yet. But I really had fun in these games. They're really hard and challenging. And it's like it's like getting salty at the game. And you feel it's like you pussies in that game as well, right? Huh? It's pussies in those games as well. Yeah. They're, they're really you can hard. parry and stuff. Like, yeah, like, you can parry. You can, some yeah, of them, in Blood, I know in um, Bloodborne you can parry. Bloodborne you can parry with the gun. Dark Souls you can parry, but it has a tighter frame window. Yeah. So it's, it's, you can parry as well, but it has a tighter frame window than yeah. Bloodborne. All right, so let me ask you this. Do you do, what do you do outside of vi uh, vi video games? You, you got any other passions or hobbies or interests, or are you at school, or what's going on in your life? Uh, I'm at school, actually. I'm in university. I'm yeah. in Abu Dhabi University. What are you studying? I'm studying environmental health and safety. Okay, why do you, why do you want to do that? Because it's easy. <laughs> Because it's not, it's not just easy, it's easy and my father told me it's really like every, everyone, every, like the, all, the, all the jobs, all, all of them need a health, a health and safety like uh, officer or something. Okay. So if you, if, you go to, if you study health and safety and graduate, you can walk basically everywhere. Okay. So it's really wanted in Dubai, so I guess I, uh, I went for it. I was originally civil engineering. Yeah. But civil, civil engineering is mostly math and physics, yeah. and I'm not really good in math and physics. Yeah. So I had to change and before it was too late. So I switched to health and safety, and I'm doing fine so far. 
<laughs> I, have a, I have a similar story, but we won't get into that. Uh, <laughs> my granddad was a civil engineer. Um, I thought I could do what he did, but I can't. Uh, so, do you, you have any like uh, like TV shows or like you know like just fun stuff like that you enjoy? Like, do you have a favorite TV show or favorite movie or? I, I do watch a lot of shows, especially the superhero shows, Flash, Arrow, uh, Legends of Tomorrow. I also watched uh, Dexter season one only, Game of Thrones. I'm actually looking forward to Game of Thrones season seven, which is on Sunday. Yeah. I might skip evil to watch. <laughs> I think they might have a room or something. Joey was talking about setting up a room for Game of Thrones. I don't know. I don't I know for I sure. I want to get in there for sure. Yeah. I want to get in. There. So I, I'm up to date with Game of Thrones. Not the, not the book, only yeah. the show. Uh, there's still a couple, a lot of shows that I still need to watch. But yeah, I do watch a lot of shows, especially movies as well. Uh, so I like to ask this question to everybody. I want to know from you, who is your favorite fighting game player currently to watch? It could be any fighting game. If I, had, if I had to pick one player, it would definitely be Momochi. And tell me why. It's just, you see him play, the way he moves, the way he thinks, the way he does stuff, that's, you can, you can see, you can like just see he's a genius. He's a genius in everything that he does. He hasn't been getting much success in uh, season two, but I still believe in him. I still can't believe that he can still like, get back to his shape and he's I only like I like him because he's a genius and he plays Ken as well so that's where I learn most of my stuff from him and even when he played back in SF4 just the way the guy the guy used to think the way the guy used to move the way the guy used to do stuff was just beyond like it wasn't human he wasn't human there was even this one event times article that that said like, like Momochi said, said in South by Southwest that said uh, what's it called Momochi thought that the screw was moving too slow and then Alex Valle told him that it's it's just his Sharingan. That's why I'm moving too slow. <laughs> so I was like, like, I think I've heard that he comes from a ninja. Like yeah. In ninja, yeah, I have that. So that's even cooler as, as well. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So if I had to pick a favorite player, it's definitely Momochi. All right, that's cool. I think Momochi is a very good choice. It's a, it's a, basic, it's a basic choice, but it's Momochi anyway. Ah, oh, it's a great choice. Pick the ninja. Pick the ninja every pick time. Ninja, yeah, exactly. All right, well, listen, it's been a pleasure getting to know you. Uh, I wish you a, a lot of luck in this tournament. You know, finally got to meet you, which is great. I'm, so I enjoy Evo, uh, most of all, you know, like have fun, as you say, just have fun. And uh, is there anything that you want to say? Like, is there anything you want to say to like your fans, your followers? Like, is there any topic you want to touch on before we go? I just want to give a shout out to my sponsor, Nasu Esports. Without them, I would never like be this, I would never be at Evo. I would never be traveling. Like, you see me every week, you see me at a tournament. If it wasn't for Nasser Eastwards, I wouldn't be traveling to any of these tournaments. So I'm really thankful for them. That's my manager right there. He's standing right to me. And I'm really grateful for the support of my fans. Uh, and my friends who are back home, they, they all... It's 6 a.m. right now. It's 5, 4 a.m. right now in Dubai. And they're all staying up to watch me play. Ah. So I really appreciate all the support my friends have given me back home. And also to, my, to the fans. I'm really grateful for everything. Well, good luck in this tournament and we're going to say goodbye to these guys. Goodbye guys.